the boy from yesterday. I'd like to remind everyone to please leave a rating and a comment so that we can share this story with people all over the world who might enjoy it. And your comments and ratings are very welcome. Chapter 25, The Einstein Prize. After their jarring trip to the cemetery, Laurel and Tom made it back home to eat something and try to sleep, but they were too rattled to sleep much, either of them. Laurel questioned over and over what she saw at the cemetery, but Tom saw it too. The names and dates on the headstones seemed to apply, imply that Sam had had progeny, but then the stones had disappeared, as if the lives of Sam's progeny had all disappeared from the history of existence. How could headstones at a cemetery change their dates? Laurel realized that if magic existed to bring Tom from the past, the same magic could be at work affecting the time continuum. They agreed to try to eat and rest as best they could, and continue their search for the incantation to make the ring work again as soon as possible. They debated whether it would be whether to, better to ask for help from Marguerite or others, but didn't want to cause panic, so they reluctantly agreed to maintain their secret and go back to campus the next day to continue their search. Early the next morning they went back to the library a while, but got hungry and took a break to come outside. They were no sooner out the front steps of the library than they saw a crowd forming on the main quad, behind a few rows of folding chairs already full of people, all in front of a short makeshift stage complete with podium and microphone set up. A banner reading ChemCal Corporation, Einstein Prize 2020, made of a rich cardinal in white plastic, was suspended between two poles between, behind the podium. A middle-aged white man in a suit, flanked by a young African-American woman and an older Asian man, stepped up to the microphone. Tom looked at the gathering and wondered what was going on, not only because of the crowd, but also because of the diverse group on the stage. "'What's all this?' Laurel Th Tom asked Laurel. "'Oh, I had heard about this, but forgot that was today. It's about the Einstein Prize,' Laurel said, tugging at Tom's sleeve and bringing him down closer. "'Yo, sup!' Emily called, running from a distance behind Laurel and Tom, carrying her backpack of books with T.J. following at an especially unrushed pace behind. Laurel turned back and smiled at Emily and T.J., but wasn't long for greetings. Listen up, she said, and turned back toward the podium, where everyone was looking now. My fellow faculty, students, alumni, and staff of Chesterfield University, once again it is my honor and my privilege to announce this year's launch of the annual Einstein Prize, the white guy on stage called out with his colleagues looking on and smiling and nodding, and the crowd applauding and cheering him back. As many of you know, but perhaps our freshmen do not, the Einstein Prize is named for the genius of Albert Einstein, who gave us so many gifts to science and to society. It is given annually by a committee of faculty comprised of various campus departments, such as physics, chemistry, psychology, and sociology, to the student who demonstrates a project that mirrors the gifts to science that Dr. Einstein's discoveries in the 20th century gave us, he said, to more applause. What were those? Tom whispered to Laurel. I'll tell you later, Laurel whispered back, resisting the urge to roll her eyes, but Emily looking over and picking up on the awkward way they were interacting, with T.J. already rolling his eyes at the whole fuss for yet another example of a non-event at Chesterfield University. For the lucky student who achieves this, a cash prize of $25,000 will be generously given, sponsored by ChemCal Corporation and its community liaison, Fujitsu Makosawa, who is with us here today. Mr. Makosawa, we honor you, and we thank you for ChemCal Corporation's generosity. Uh-huh, tell that to the woman in Idaho who had stillborn babies from the pollution they dumped into that river, TJ said to Emily which she shrugged and continued listening to the white guy, who never did introduce himself by name, but that Emily thought was the chair of the chemistry department. Applications will be available in the lobby of Putnam Hall, and the ChemCal website, as well as our university's website, will have further instructions for applica applicants. Good luck, and may the best man, he started to say until the African-American woman tapped him on the shoulder and briefly whispered in his ear, prompting him to turn back to the podium's microphone. Or woman, I should say, win. 
The crowd applauded loudly, leaving Laurel to wonder if they were applauding the announcement of the Einstein Prize or the fact that he corrected himself, albeit with prompting, to include women as welcome applicants. No one among all the people making noise, least of all Tom, Laurel, Emily, and TJ, noticed that far in the back, behind the rest of the crowd, Christian stood watching, not only the action on stage, but also Laurel and her group silently squinting, with the smirk returning to his face. Huh. I could get pretty far out of Chesterfield with twenty-five grand, he thought. And somehow I have a feeling that good old Miss Laurel and maybe her crazy-ass new boyfriend or their nerd friends are going to help me do just that. <laughs>